so Nina, Miss Nina here, uh, texted me last week and was like, you know the ALS ice bucket challenge thing? Do you guys, you guys, of course, know this? Yes. Yes. Everyone knows this. Gone viral. All that good stuff. And she was like, I want to do this on the podcast, maybe. How can that happen? And then we talked and forwarded emails and texts and all that good stuff. And then we talked last week at the podcast, and I was like, you know what bothers me about the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge? And don't get me wrong, I think it's an amazing, beautiful thing. Spreading awareness is only a positive. Please, I understand this. But people are not talking so much about what's behind the ALS, about what's behind the disease. It's more about morality and that kind of thing. Again, it's all a good thing. It's all a lesson. So I said, Nina, I'm kind of a mini expert, a little bit, on um, the man behind the name ALS. So if it's cool, I want to talk about that very, very quickly, like under a minute. I could talk forever about this, but very quickly. So who knows the man behind ALS? The name? Lou Gehrig. Lou Gehrig, yes, yes, yes. Lou Gehrig has been my hero since I'm eight years old, since I was eight. Love the man, I see his face, I see articles, and I cry. That's just my thing with Lou Gehrig. So he's the man behind ALS. ALS probably wouldn't, you know, it would not be uh, in the public eye that it is today if it were not for him. He became the face of it. Dylan, lovely, tortured ALS. He said ACL or some crap. I don't know what. I still love you, Dylan. It's all good. He's a little bit drunk tonight, so I forgive him. So anyway, let's talk about Luke Air for just a hot second here. What, what, what team did he play for? Thanks. Yes, Murderous Row with which player? Babe Ruth. Here we go. Uh, batted in the lineup, third and fourth, all that good stuff. Probably one of the greatest players of all time, many baseball historians feel that had he not been stricken with the disease and many, many uh, film footage shows that by the age of 34 was already coming upon him, that he would have uh, many of the records, if not most of today's baseball records. He still holds many of them, by the way. Most Grand Slams, 23, most RBIs in three consecutive years, and on and on and on. But this was a man who was truly an American hero because he lived his life with dignity, integrity, modesty, he was humble, he was extraordinary. He's probably most memorialized today for his very famous speech. You guys know this speech? Yes? A lot of historians say that this is the greatest speech in the history of the world, actually. Today, who can, who can finish that sentence? Today, I consider, no? Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. So at Yankee Stadium, July 4th, 1939, he gives this speech, and he's dying, and he barely can walk anymore, and he considers himself to be the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Now, his wife and his doctor, a lot of people don't know this, they were corresponding through handwritten letters, and they, his wife especially, did not want Lou, she called him Luke, she did not want him to know that he was dying, that his fate was terminal, so that he would always have hope. And he did. And there's an amazing book called Luckiest Man by Jonathan Ike, which you should really check out, because again, true American hero, where a lot of those letters, for the first time just a couple years ago, were published. They were at auction, had been over 70 years. They had been private. And Lou's letters to his, to his doctor as well. He can't read anymore. He can't talk anymore. His wife is dictating for him. And all in those letters, it's just hope. It's inspiration. It's, I can't live anymore, but I want to live. And I do have, if you have to see these letters, they're extraordinary. So this was a man, the disease is named after, but he was obviously much, much more a, well, a well-rounded, extraordinary human being. Let's not forget that there are people behind the name ALS. It is, it is a killer. And uh, I'm getting emotional, so I'm gonna stop. We're gonna go to Nina here who uh, is awesome enough tonight to do a twist on the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. It's not going to be so much ice, I don't think. No. This is why they're here. I'm going to stand far away. I'm not covered up like these people over here. Um, so I'm going to give you the mic. Does okay. it go all the way? Does it stretch? Will it reach? Yeah, see, it's reaching. Okay. Here, I'll step out for a minute. All right. Okay, thank you for having me on here. And I also want to thank my good friend Ulysses for doing this challenge with me. We are uh, representing his music with our shirts Ooh. right here. I'll begin and, with Dot uh, Vegas. Dot Vegas, yes. Yes. Um, so I have been challenged by at least 10 people. And I am all about the cause for ALS because I watched a dear friend pass from it. So it's very near and dear to my heart. And I am also a big uh, water conservationist. So I didn't want to use water either because I wouldn't feel right doing that. 
Um, but the whole cause is about donating, so I just really want to make it clear to donate to the cause. I've donated $100, and whatever you can donate is all I ask. Um, we want to call out some people before this happens, and we're getting something very fun dumped on us today. So Ulysses, you want to call it your challenge first? And sure. Okay, so my name is Ulysses, and I challenge Freeman White of Fremont East. Oh. Don't hate me. I challenge DJ Lenny Alfonso, and I challenge uh, Ryan Brunty from the 80s Kids. Thank you. Nice. Yes. So to piggyback off of that, I'm challenging Dora Lynn from Fremonti Studios, so that should be fun. Um, I'm challenging Shane Stewart. I am challenging the Catalyst Girls, and I am challenging Joey Bannis. Alright, so how do we do this? What's happening? Ooh. Well, who's, who's going to do the, uh, oh, out. it's Pablo? Are you doing this Pablo? Wait, what's happening? What, what's going on? If it's not water, what is it? You'll find out. You'll find, You'll find out? out? Alright. I've been waiting for this moment for... Pablo's been waiting for this moment. The moment is arriving. I don't think you should even have a shower cup on your head. That's not fair. That's bad idea. Are you serious? Why should have a shower cup on your head? Don't cover your face. Are you guys ready? ready? Hold it. Thing, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I should have had them say, I don't know, but okay. Yeah. I smell like a washing apple. <laughs> There's apples in that? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Apple, oh, yeah, apple, I smell the apples now. <laughs> yeah. Give it up. Give it up Woo! for them. Oh, awesome. Woo! Thank you, Peanut. Appreciate it. We're not allowed to shake them. I love how, like, everybody's got, like, dill nail up with trash bags on them, like, here. 